What comes to mind when you think of an artist? It might be a stereotype. Let me ask you this. Have you ever shied away from describing yourself as an artist? You're creative, you've honed your craft, perhaps you even do it professionally. But when it comes to calling yourself an artist, identifying in the artist role, does it feel a little awkward, embarrassing, or even anxiety producing? If so, take heart, you're not the only one. And this may be why. When we think of the artist role, there are some pretty intense stereotypes that can spring to mind pretty quickly. Can you think of some? We can do it together. The starving artist, the artist that is always struggling in some capacity. Maybe the artist that is flaky and unreliable, or maybe a little wacky or off kilter. The pretentious artist. Brace yourself. Let's get a little more caricature here. A person in a beret with a curled mustache and a striped shirt holding a palette with paint swatches neatly laid out. Perhaps if you're thinking in the realm of an actor or a poet, someone wearing a black turtleneck or a dancer, a ballerina with a tutu and their hands on their head spinning. As over the top as it sounds, these stereotypes are real they've been reinforced. With full transparency, even stating these stereotypes aloud is tough for me. Not only is it supremely unpleasant, but at this point, they're actually hard for me to conjure. I kind of have to go into manual overdrive, so to speak, to bring these stereotypes back into focus. And here's why. One of the most effective things I have ever done for myself as an artist years ago was to consciously and purposefully break apart the stereotypes and redefine the role of artist for myself. I've discovered time and time and time again individually and as a therapist working with clients that before you can tap into the true magnitude, the true effectiveness, the true potency, of being an artist, you really need to revolutionize how that role is defined for you. Now, how do we do this? It's two parts. First, you unmantle. Second, you rebuild. So let's start the unmantling process. Let me begin by asking you a seemingly goofball question. What do ostriches do when they're scared. Was your impulse to say, bury their heads in the sand? Well, if so, I bet you are not alone. And guess what? It's simply not true. It's not factual when it comes to the actual behavior of an ostrich. But we've learned to believe that it's true the same way that we've soaked in artist stereotypes over the years. So perhaps it's through the media we've ingested, film, television, commercials, print ads, cartoons. Oftentimes these are where we get many of our subliminal and overt stereotypes. And and they tend to really stick with us. It's a real statement on how imagery, particularly in our developmental years, molds our assumptions and the lens in which we view the world. Now, along with the ostrich, these artist stereotypes may have been embedded since childhood and perhaps have since continued to unconsciously define the role for us. And just on a side note, What's the irony about these stereotypes that I've mentioned so far? They were implanted in our minds by other artists. That's a true testament to the power of art. So let's talk a little bit about stereotyping and the brain. Dr. Claude Steele, a social psychologist, coined the term stereotype threat. Stereotype threat refers to a phenomenon that occurs when an individual is conscious of the stereotypes that are relevant to their collective identity. And this consciousness is impactful enough to negatively affect their performance and how they view themselves. 
Simply put, negative stereotypes can have serious implications on a person's ability to perform at their maximum level and to view themselves the way they choose to. As Dr. Steele explains, stereotype threat can be applied to any group that has a negative connotation placed upon it based on collective stereotyping. Dr. Steele began his work by studying racial and gender gaps in academic environments, and he discovered that when an individual is made aware of how they are being perceived and how they should function based on a particular stereotype, it inhibits the functioning of the brain, including our working memory. Our working memory, rooted in the prefrontal cortex, is the part of our brain that holds relevant information in mind while working through something. So it's kind of like our brain's scratch pad. It's the part of our brain that can be crowded out when we are feeling stigmatized and in turn affecting our ability to think with clarity or to perform at our best. Featured in the description box is a fantastic interview with Dr. Steele on the effects of stereotype threat, as well as a link to an excellent book by Dr. Sion Bylock, which highlights the concept of stereotype threat as she explores the neurological effects of performing under pressure. So back to the artist role. Simply put, if someone feels self-conscious about being creative or being an artist based on negative or degrading stereotypes associated with the role, it will hinder performance at a cognitive level. Stereotypes are impactful, and I would add harmful to the artist. Why are they harmful? Here are five reasons. Number one, they shame. They can make us want to veer away from really owning who we are because they can cause us painful feelings of humiliation and distress, as if we're doing something wrong or unworthy or less than. Number two, they downplay how others view us, our choices and our goals, which in turn can affect how we view ourselves. Think about it this way. When the work that we do is seen as simply a hobby, or something that we're doing until we find a real job, or that we're stepping onto a life path that will result in years of struggle, financial and otherwise, that cannot lead to anything substantial, a pipe dream. This is going to take an emotional and cognitive toll on how we behave within the role. Number three, they stick. They are hard to shake. Once a stereotype has been established without conscious effort to work through it and revise it, it can be extremely difficult to ever overturn. Number four, they compartmentalize. Through stereotypes, we are trained that whatever we are, we are only that thing. It can hold us back from having our own definitions of what we are and who we are, which of course can limit us and keep us from stepping into more expansiveness in our creativity. And number five, they limit. They limit us from allowing the artist role to lead in other parts of our lives. With negative stereotyping, we tend to forget that the artist role can be effectively integrated and even at the helm of every aspect of who we are, not just within our craft, not just within our medium. So we have taken the time to do a little dismantling. Now let's begin the rebuild. The artist role by its nature is inherently a number of different things. So let's expand it together. I'd love to see what you think in the comments below. Here's a place to start. The artist is a creator, an inventor. The artist is a problem solver, a thought leader. The artist is a survivalist. The artist is a revolutionary, a healer, a visionary. The artist is a mirror reflecting back to their culture. The artist can be a leader, guiding the masses, a counterculturalist, swaying the rest. Yes, and to both, and all of the above. The artist is brave. It takes so much bravery to be an artist. The artist is your role as a partner, a parent, a sibling, a teacher, a student, a neighbor, perhaps as a person who creates, you're a musician, director, writer, actor. 
painter, designer, producer, architect, chef, animator, carpenter, dancer, entrepreneur, maybe a mixture of these roles. Honestly, even this is only one tiny drop in the bucket of different types of artist roles being played out as we speak. And something else to consider, this is so key, the artist has the power to bring what once didn't exist into reality. Now think about it, when looking around, if we didn't have an artist at hand, what would we have? That chair you're sitting on, an artist designed it, the space you're in, the clothes you're wearing, the transportation you take, the foods you love, the technology you use, the entertainment you enjoy. Odds are an artist served as a visionary in some capacity in bringing it into existence. Similarly, when looking back at history, it's often charted through artistry, the literature, the music, the architecture, the fashion, the theater, the visual art. Now we're talking about some pretty powerful things here. So the next time the guy in the beret and the striped shirt pops into your mind, or the starving, suffering artist, maybe in a moment of feeling embarrassed or shamed or slipping into self-doubt, aim to remember to dismantle and rebuild the role. And as valuably, bring the foundations of the artist role not only into your creative and professional life, but also to your relational life, your community life, your faith life. I'd love to hear about your experience dismantling and rebuilding. Now, go and create. You were created to. Now here's the thing about procrastination. With the right tools, it can be our greatest helper. Without the right tools, it will take us down, shamelessly stealing days, months, years, and even decades from us. And it doesn't stop on its own. The procrastination system, six hours, five segments, 20 chapters, custom built tools and concepts reinforced by up-to-date neuroscience. Turn your inaction into traction. The link's below. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you. If this episode was useful, I would love for you to hit the like button and perhaps share it with somebody. For more tool-based, actionable, creative content, please make sure to subscribe. Also, if you have a question about creativity or the artist role that you would like to have answered, please leave it in the comments below and it may be featured in an upcoming episode.